Hello everyone, this is Swap here to talk about what the composer Spencer Nielsen has said about my soundtrack theory. I hope that anyone who is watching this video have already seen my 7 part video series or have listened to some of my past styled remixes. I like to first talk about something that I knew of before it was sort of confirmed through a certain discovery which did technically lead me to thinking about this whole idea that I've been expressing of within the past few months. Around the mid 2010s, I was very much into some Sonic ROM hacks, one of them being for Sonic 3 called Sonic 3 Complete, which is a hack that adds some improvements to the original Sonic 3 and K. The hack originally had a lot of custom options within it. One of the options the hack had was to replace the Sonic 3 tracks, which for a long time were speculated to be done by Michael Jackson with Genesis renditions of the tracks that were originally used from the Sonic & Knuckles PC collection. Before then, I really only have ever listened to the PC tracks a few times. With the inclusion in this hack, I started to listen to them more and started thinking that these tracks really fit well with the Sonic 3 sound font. I also started to realize that tracks like Launch Base Act 2 sounded like they were done by the same composer for the music of Hydra City Act 2 or Chrome Gadget. I even noticed that through beating the game with the PC credits theme, which you can do, that it actually sings very well with the ending cutscene despite thinking like other people have that this track and other tracks were only made for the PC release of Sonic 3. Noticing all of this made me think that those PC tracks were actually originally made part of the original Sonic 3 track until they decided to get Michael Jackson and his music team to work on certain tracks for them to replace those other tracks. After about a year, I sort of forgot about me thinking about this until around November 2019 when an undiscovered Sonic 3 prototype was found and one of the things that was discovered in that build was some different tracks from what was used in the final game that ended up actually being the same tracks that were used in the PC collection. When I found out about this, I kind of freaked out about it since this likely could confirm what I thought about a few years prior that no one else online had thought about. This inspired me to listen more of the two different Sonic CD soundtracks since the debates between the, the different Sonic 3 tracks, especially after the prototype discovery, were very similar to the debates people had about the two different CD soundtracks. Through searching up some Sonic CD tracks on YouTube, I noticed that the YouTuber King Media Studios, who I haven't looked much into his content for a while, has made his own concepts of US past tracks since the original soundtrack didn't have their own. Through listening to those fan tracks, I have learned that another music YouTuber named Bouncy Girls Music Room originally also have made a few of his own US past tracks which I have listened to. I used to generally listen to these fan made US past tracks alongside the US soundtrack until I started to think more about a certain top comment made on Bouncy Crow's Stardust Speedway US Pass Track concept video, where someone stated that they've always thought that the past themes were kind of like a bridge between the Japanese and US OSTs. With me thinking more about this comment, I started to imagine what the original past tracks would have sounded like using the instruments of the US soundtracks and having some of the melodies, the harmonies, 
or the base of the past tracks be replaced with a part of the US zone tracks. And through that starting with Starter Speedway Pass, I started to think that the US soundtrack was meant to be based on the single pass tracks originally made by the Japanese composers which were then compressed into the game to be used in all releases. This was an idea that I've sat on for over a year while trying to figure out everything and how the US tracks are connected to the past tracks in terms of the present and future tracks being remixes and using a similar composition style to the past tracks overall. I have wanted to make a video series of sorts along with some track remixes, but wanted to wait until this year to start making them since this year is the 30th anniversary of Song CD. I actually first started to work on all of the past styled remixes, including the last one, before I would start to work on the 7 part video series. After posting the first 3 parts of my video series, I decided to email King Media himself about all this, and he did not buy into it. Much later, within the time some of my remaining past style remixes were being uploaded, I decided to go on Bounty Grow's Discord server and ask about some things in relation to my soundtrack theory, which Bouncy Grow thought I was questioning about something else. And when they actually did understand what I was asking of, Bouncy Grow wasn't sure about it. Later the same day, I decided to post one of my remixes within the server, which led to a bit of an argument I had with one of the people within the server about the legitimacy of my theory. With all of that, it made me want to actually go out and email Spencer Nielsen himself, which I did the next day, and then did again the next week, since I originally first posted my email kind of late that first week. This is what I mainly emailed him. To Spencer Nielsen, I wanted to start off and say that I'm someone who is very much a fan of the US Sonic CD soundtrack in which you have helped make. I know that it's common knowledge that all of the original Japanese tracks were able to be replaced with tracks that are part of the US soundtrack except for the past tracks which will, will all remain the same in all the regional releases of the game because Sega of Japan wanted tracks of the other soundtrack to still be represented within the North American releases. In recent years, I have started to listen to your soundtrack alongside those same past tracks and I have started to notice how the level themes, the present and future tracks, actually sound similar to the same past tracks despite being done by the composers of the Japanese soundtrack. I started noticing this through comparing the present and future Stardust Speedway tracks to the single pass track that is used alongside them, and then trying to do that with all the other level tracks. I especially noticed how the present and future Palm Tree Panic tracks seem to arrange the different melodies of the single pass tracks separately between the present and future tracks. It, se it even seems that the tracks that were mainly done by Mark Crew, Collision Chaos, Metallic Madness, The Boss Theme, use similar composition styles that are within the past tracks of Collision Chaos and Metallic Madness, but with some different sounding instruments. With all of this, I would like to ask if the past themes that were compressed into the game had any level of influence on how the US soundtrack was made. If there is some truth to this, I still very much like your soundtrack and think that it is different from the other soundtrack. Through the email I have sent, Nielsen responded back with this. Hi Blank and thanks for your note. I hadn't nor Sterling or Crew spent any time listening to the Japanese soundtrack prior to composing all versions of those levels. There just wasn't time nor access to the Japanese composed pieces at the time, so any similarities to those pieces is purely coincidental. I hope this helps. Cheers, 
Spence. That was Spencer Nielsen's response. He basically said that he and Mark Crew didn't know anything about the Japanese soundtrack, specifically the past tracks, when making their own soundtrack, and any such similarities were purely a coincidence. So, how do I feel about this? Honestly, I feel very conflicted about this through everything that I have found and made connections of with this soundtrack. You know, a few days ago, from when I'm recording this, I decided to go through the scripts of my video series and count how many single similarities that can be made between one of the parts of the past tracks to a certain part of one of the US tracks. And I also counted some connections that I technically didn't make mention of within my original videos. When I add up all the amount of similarities that I made for each past track, it made up to a total of 390 single similarities. There are at least 390 single similarities you can make between the past tracks in the US tracks. Now let me follow that with mentioning some of the track similarities that I feel are very questionable in regards to the claim that they never listened to the past tracks when making the soundtrack. The first one I want to mention is the general connections that can be made between the US Chord Squadron tracks and Chord Squadron Past. Like how the electric guitar sounds like the whistle melody in the beginning of the past track. The funky guitars sounding like the piano harmony from the past track. generally having the same like notes being repeated throughout the track like the bass in the past track and it using some electric guitar riffs that sound like the repeating cowbell that is used within the past track. the US Course Quadrant tracks, how do they use similar sounding instruments with some similar composition styles like what Quartz Quadrant Pass uses? Let's move on to US Metallic Madness, which uses an electronic bass in both the present and good future tracks. The bass mainly when it's in a faster tempo within the good future track sounds very much like an exact arrangement of the base of Metallic Madness Pass. How can those tracks use an electronic bass that actually not only sounds like the repeating xylophone melody from the past track, but also an arrangement of the same bass from that past track? Now I would like to mention a few similarities that I found that I've never mentioned in my original video series that I think are very questionable. Like you know, in Stardust Speedway Present, how there is a scratch sound effect in the beginning that I think sounds like part of the record scratches from Stardust Speedway Past. Well, if you actually listen closely throughout the track, 
you can occasionally hear a short electronic sound effect that also sounds like a part of the record scratches from the past track. This also sounds like the same short electronic sound effect that is used alongside a scratch sound effect within the special stage music. Why would they use these sound effects that sound like the record scratches from the past track and of all of the level themes that isn't the special stage, it's only used within the music of Stardust Speedway present. Like, isn't that like a bit intentional? Another similarity I originally didn't mention of was for Wacky Workbench Good Future, where it uses a voice sound effect as it transitions to the next section of the track. This voice sound effect sounds very much like the voice sample used within the beginning of Collision Chaos Past. How does one and only one of the US tracks use a voice sound effect that is very much like the voice sample used in one of the past tracks? Putting all of the points that I have mentioned together, along with acknowledging the number of track similarities I have found from each of the US tracks, I personally find it hard to see how the composers never used the past tracks as a basis in making the US soundtrack. I feel like there is something that went down within the development of the soundtrack that still hasn't been told for some reason. That could be for a ridiculous legal reason through a non-disclosure agreement that likely would have been done by either Sega of America or Sega of Japan. If the US soundtrack was really made entirely with no basis from the past tracks whatsoever, then this has to be the biggest coincidence I've ever discovered myself in regards to a soundtrack. For all those hundreds of similarities between the tracks, I find it very, very strange for all those to just be coincidences. Now I would like to talk about some things in regard to the whole soundtrack theory to end this video in more of a positive note. I would like to say that I believe that my theory helps to improve this soundtrack through being able to explain how the past tracks that were already made by the Japanese composers can connect to the US tracks through being able to recognize how the present and future tracks sound like arrangements of the same past tracks while interpreting all of the instrumentation of the US tracks as sounding similar to the instrumentation of the past tracks. I know that a few people I have talked to have said to me that if the level tracks were meant to be remixes, they would have made it more obvious, which to that I say, what about some of the Act 2 remixes of Sonic 3, specifically Hydro City Act 2, Lava Leaf Act 2, and also the beta versions of Carnival Night and Launch Base Act 2, which I very well remember when some people used to think that those tracks were more of their own tracks separate from the Act 1 themes when we only knew of those tracks from the PC collection. And honestly, I think the similarities are more obvious than many other people would say and think they are if you really listen to the level tracks alongside the past tracks. And I have personally not been able to unhear how similar these tracks actually are to one another even through replaying through the game with this soundtrack. I feel that no matter what Spencer Nielsen has said, I still think that it is generally an interesting concept for people to look into and interpret with this soundtrack. 
I do hope that one day someone out there will make some US style renditions of the same pass tracks that were already in the game based on my own comparisons or pass style remixes. I think that it would be much cooler than having some original US pass tracks since it would make the original pass tracks sound more like a fusion between the two soundtracks like what that one YouTube comment have said that pretty much inspired me to think about this whole theory. Anyway, that will be it for this video. I still hope that people out there will share this idea around and to anyone who does it, they don't necessarily have to mention my videos through it. This has been Swap and I am out of here.